better come on in this house. You better come on in this house. You better come on in this house. You better come on in this house. It's gonna rain down fire.
this morning and most times every day, all through the day. My burden is for those who do not know the Lord. I even asked God a why question, even though I told him I would never ask him why. But I'm asking him, why do I feel a burden for the world? Not just for my family, those that are in the congregation. Amen. So many souls are being lost. Amen. Because they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm praying for all of you come down to the church and I see your pictures in the rest of you and I pray for each one of you. Amen. That God will touch you and God will save you. I want to give you this before we start because this is maybe as, more, as important as the message itself. There are no degrees when it comes to salvation. According to Bible principles, there is a certain measure of faith. There are individuals who have maybe a greater measure of faith than I or you do. There are individuals who have a certain degree of an anointing, maybe greater than what you or I have. But when it comes to salvation, there's only one degree. You either is or you ain't. I never thought about it like that, so you don't have to compare yourself and, and say he or she is more saved than I am. If you say, you just say. Let me try that again. If you're saved, you are just saved. And, and I want you to start appreciating your relationship with God over everything else. That's what I'm doing. Might not have all the money that I want, but I'm saved. Might not have the health that I desire, but I am saved. At the end of the day, I'm saved. I just need a response. At the end of the day, I am saved. And I know. I've been saved all day. It's a short day, but I've been saved all day. And no evil have I done. I was thanking God this morning for how he has kept me. Amen. How he has kept me. My wife will tell you, I stay alone. I be in the house. Downstairs. Matter of fact, I got up this morning and a preacher was preaching. And he said, made this statement. He says, do you own your phone? Or does your phone own you? I said, what kind of message? And I looked at it, and he was talking about how much time we spend on our phones. I got a message today from my phone, because you know I'm not computer literate. And my phone told me this morning, said, this week, you spent seven hours talking to me. Of course, my hours are studying the word, but seven hours. And I felt convicted. I said, can I spend seven hours, even though I'm studying the Word, can I spend seven hours with my God? I don't have nobody here. I'll just leave the good part, because there was something else that I didn't like, but I'll leave the good part. My brothers and sisters, I want you to take your salvation seriously. You that are viewing Whatever you do, don't play with it. Don't play with your soul. Amen. Amen. And nobody knows you better than you. And if you've done something wrong, get it right. Amen. Get it right. I have people calling me who are no longer members of this church. I get several calls. And one of them, Sister Michelle, wherever she is, I wake up in the morning and I hear some noise and there is Brother Smith, Chris Smith, yeah. cutting my grass. <laughs> Amen. He's got another project that he's doing for me. And I tell people, when people call me, I got a call a few days ago, yesterday I think it was, and the person called me and we were just talking, do you know that I don't feel nothing towards anybody? Yeah. Let me try that again. I don't feel no kind of way towards anybody. Let me try it again for you who may be thinking, ain't nobody done nothing to me. 
those that are here and those that are gone, Brother Bruce, you see them come by every now and then. They're making a statement. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Be free. Be free. You are still be free. Amen. Amen. I don't have no arts against nobody. I had a young man come down the altar one day and he fell into my arms. He said, Pastor, I need to repent. I need to repent. I said, whatever it is, you forgive me. He said, no, I need to repent. I said, please don't tell me. Because if you tell me what you did, it may be difficult for me to repent, so you'll forgive me. That's the way I live. I don't want to know what you did to me. Amen. But whatever it is, the Bible said, when you stand praying, forgive. I ain't got time to have no five or six meetings with you. You're forgiven. I'm good. You're good. I'm good. Life is too short. Eternity is too long to spend without God. Amen. Bow your heads, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, I come before you as humbly as I know how. You know that we've had this relationship this week and you know we've had conversations this week. You know that you even comforted me this week. I'm asking God that the same anointing that I felt sitting in my room somehow you will share that anointing with these who are in the sanctuary today and those who are viewing us right now. This is not a selfish prayer. I want you to bless us. I want you to bless your people everywhere. I want you to look on all of our children that are outside the ark of safety. God, I lift them up to you that somehow by your spirit and by your power, just like you trust our minds, you will touch their minds. That that seed that we planted in them while we trained them, when we brought them to church, somebody will water that seed and cause it to break forth. I pray for those that we don't know who are outside the ark of safety. I pray for those, God, who are fighting for injustices, but they have not made proper relationship with you. I pray for protection over them. Because it's not your will that any soul be lost, but that all will come to repentance and receive everlasting life. We pray now that you would watch over this word that you have given me. And I pray the prayer that all pray that you would stretch out your hand with signs, wonders, and miracles so that they might know that you have sent me and sent this word. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And while you're yet standing, you that have your Bibles, the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 1. 12. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because the worshippers once birds should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices of sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then he said, Lord, I come to do thy will, O God. 
He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standing daily ministering and offering of times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. The twelfth verse. But this man, after he had offered once one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Before you sit down, repeat after me. There is a cure, there is a cure for, this. for this. Come on, repeat it again. There is, there is a, cure a cure for this. For this. When I first got up, challenged by the news, I said there's got to be a cure for this. When the enemy gave me bad news, my message would have been, ain't but one cure for this. But in case I forget, I'm concluding that there is yeah. cure for this. Yeah. What I want you to do before you sit down, think about something you're dealing with. Yeah. Something supernatural or natural. Uh -huh. Physical, mentally, or emotional. And by faith declare that there is, there is a cure for, for this. You may be seated. I have an appointment in the morning, I believe, at 9 o'clock with the lung specialist. I have some bad news for him. I know he has good news for me. They've given me so much medication that it makes me sick. Brother Damien, I have one of those inhalers like you have. Mm -hmm. Two puffs in the morning, two puffs at night. Have all kinds of pills, and none of them work. Matter of fact, they're in the trunk of my car as we speak. I have not taken any of them in weeks. They don't know what the problem is, but for some reason, and this is their protocol, this is their profession, but I want to hear one of them tell me, Mr. Townsend, there really is no cure for this. I took about 30 plus allergy tests on my arms, and they came back that I am not, I'm quoting him, said, Mr. Townsend, you are not allergic to nothing. He said, you can even eat some crab, which one doctor said I would die if I did. But he said, you can eat crab, and Mr. Townsend, whenever you want to eat crab, he told me to come see him. My response was, doctor, if they have crab in heaven, I will not be eating any. You couldn't even laugh right there because you're so depressed, but laughter doeth good like a medicine. I'm trying to be an example to you. I don't say this for you to feel sorry for me because you're never going to see me looking like I'm going through anything. But I study, I listen. Let me just talk. Brothers and sisters, you need to make sure you are positioned whether it be here, whether you're viewing this telecast, or wherever you are, you need to make sure you're positioned where you can hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Not what man says. Amen. Not our thoughts. I listened to science. And they told us that this is going to get worse. And I want you to be serious about this. Amen. 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 Ain't nobody coming to my house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Last name Townsend or not. <laughs> they told you not to do that. Yeah. Now, now, this is another problem that I have. I need you to pray for me. 
I feel like nobody is really listening to me. Not just you. Not just you. But who told you that the virus was airborne before they declared it was airborne? And who's going to tell you that Donald Trump is probably lying about his illness? I'll probably be with Jesus when you find out. But we cannot afford in a time like this to be lied to from the politicians or the preachers. This is too serious to play with. Am I making myself clear? Yes. As COVID pandemic covers the earth, and I always say this when I have a, a deep message, that I did not get this out of somebody's book. Let me pause right there. The message that God has for his people is not found in somebody else's book. He says, so shall my word be that cometh forth out of his mouth. It shall not return void. Yeah. There are some good messages in some books. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Good messages. But you have to position yourself as the shepherd and overseer of God's people for the rainbow word that the people that you're teaching need to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I saw a caption somewhere that said that we should not be taking somebody else's message and preaching. Does anybody know, can anybody beside me discern when yes. the message yes. that's being preached ain't theirs? Yes. The song that they're singing ain't theirs. Yes. See, you can't sing my song because you don't feel it like I do. I wish I could sing, Brother Trayvon, like a lot of you other blessed people that have that giftedness, mm -hmm. that anointing, or that natural skill set. If I could, I'll show you how to sing with an anointing. Amen. Somebody help me talk. And when it comes to your testimony, nobody can give it like you give it. You don't have to yell like somebody else. You can just stand there and talk like Jesus did and display an anointing in your life. So we have to be careful, brothers and sisters, that we are not in the right position. I even saw where they said one of the reasons that our churches are open now is because they listen to the religious community. And I said, amen. I said, amen. And we, they use their influence demanding that we have a right, a constitutional right. Yeah, you got a constitutional right to die of COVID. Yeah. You're quiet now. I need responses. You see, that's what I'm talking about. When I get no response, my assumptions are you're not listening. But I got this from him. And you must be a special people because this took a whole lot of prayer. Amen to receive a word like this. Amen. And so then, regardless of the efforts that have been employed by the scientific community to find a cure, however, according to the CDC, no remedies, no medicine, or immunizations to date, I'm quoting them, to treat this virus. Amen. Can I get a response? Amen. Why this Rendorsover, whatever that is? He said it may help you feel better, but it's not cured. Let me try it again. It may help you feel better, but it's not a cure. Because this virus is microscopic. It's a parasite. I got my lesson. <coughs> that wasn't it. That can infect the organism and cause a disease. Presently, there are 8 million cases 
according to the CDC. And they said it's rapidly getting worse. What then is the cause? Because if you can't discover the cause, there's no way you can find the cure. I'm going to preach like I'm at the White House. You've got to determine what the, the cause is. Before you can find the cure. The reason they can't find a cure for my cough is because they don't know the cause. Sin is the root cause of all the ills and injustices in our world. And until we recognize that it is the cause, we will never discover the cure. Romans 5 and 17 says, For by one man's offense, death reigned by one man. Much more are they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of God, righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. Once the cause was discovered, the Old Testament priests sought to discover a remedy or a cure. They tried to find some means to rid those who were infected. The entire human race, one man contaminates the whole world. It's quiet now. Amen. And they said to us that this disease is transferred from person to person. That was the first discovery. Now they say it's droplets in the air. And some little preacher told you that in the hood, that it was in the air. The little preacher told you before they even knew what it was that it's impossible for this many people to get the disease from person to person. That little preacher told you it must be in the air. And that did not come from some scientific discovery that came from me living in the hood on Grant Street. My mother would walk in the house and she'd say, What's that I smell? Something was in the air. And she wanted to discover where it was so it would not contaminate everybody else in the house. Once a year, treatment was applied. Blood. They would put it on a goat. And then run the goat out of the city. That's where you get the phrase scapegoat. But then when the year passed, they had to come back and go through the same ritual, simply appeasing the minds and the hearts of the sinner. And we as men of God must stop appeasing the heart of the sinner. And let the sinner know that what would it profit you to gain this whole world and then lose your own soul? Sacrificing bulls and goats and none of them treated the problem that the people had. Remember I'm at the White House this morning. <laughs> Treatment provides temporary, limited improvement. Treatment provides temporary and limited improvement, but no cure. Come on, talk back to me, church. Which is Complete restoration to spiritual health. That's what supernatural cure is. Oh, help me preach. We're not supposed to be treating you. We're supposed to have a, 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 a power in the gospel that cures you. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin since we've been treated? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin? You see, the power of the leader, it kills sin. Oh God. When I accepted Jesus, it killed sin in my heart. And I don't have to sin no more. God help us for teaching our people that everybody is doing a little something. God, deliver us 
from deceiving our people yeah. in thinking that holiness is not right. Yeah. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Yeah. The wages of sin mm -hmm. is death. Mm -hmm. The gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Could it be that the modern day church is guilty of rendering a watered down message, another gospel mixed with worldly contaminants that prevents its power to affect a cure? Could that be the problem? For this sinful virus that has plagued humanity Romans 1 and 16 says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes and that receives this cure. It's the supernatural vaccine. I'm preaching, I just moved to St. Louis now. We find Jesus the great physician, <coughs> Jesus the Christ seeking to save and to offer the cure for all who were infected with this deadly virus. Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Sin, like the virus, is deadly. Amen. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. And unless it's treated, unless it's treated, uh -huh. you will eventually die. Yeah. Uh -huh. But if you receive the cure, yeah. the supernatural vaccine, yeah. which is a gift of God, yeah. you will live forever. Yeah. I'm preaching. Yeah. And Matthew 11 and 28 says, Jesus offers the cure. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden uh -huh. with the virus. And I will give you the cure. I'll give you a rest. Before the cure, the antibodies are first tested. The test has to be done to make sure that the person has recovered. And they do so by analyzing your blood after you've been given a cure. Isaiah 1 and 18 provides the results that came back when Jesus gave us the cure. Amen. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Amen. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Amen. In other words, the blood of Jesus contains a cure for this. Now, I was preaching one of those worldly church messages. Uh -huh. You've been shouting all over the place. Uh -huh. You came for me to give you a treatment today. Uh -huh. But instead, I'm giving you a cure. Yeah. The world today was like the woman with an issue of blood who saw the remedy. I can preach this because I'm seeking a remedy for my own. I can preach this with power and anointing and conviction because I've spent all kinds of money at the hands of the doctors and my condition is not any better. Twelve years spent all of her living at the hands of the physicians. Let me pause right here. If I hadn't told you, I'm going to tell you now, there is no cure for this virus. The CDC just said it a few days ago, and God confirmed it. said, tell my people there is no cure for this virus. But in desperation, she said, I need somebody here that's where I'm at. Who shall I be? Do I have any, I just need one witness that feels like me. I'm in a desperate situation. Hallelujah to God. But this woman in desperation, she said, if I can but touch the hem of, of his garment. Yeah. I ain't never tried this before. Yeah. Made all of my appointments, she's saying, for 12 years, and I'm broke now. Mm -hmm. She said, but 
I got nothing to lose. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Does anybody remember when the church of old had this kind of spiritual sensing right now? They were never hopeless because they believed when nothing else would help, God would step in and provide a cure. She believed that no, though all else had failed, Hydroxy, Corrigan, Dopinarin, Famostop, Camostop, Famo T9. You may form Byron, not just us. And when I, why are you looking at me? I was taking notes. And when I was reading all of these different medications, have I not shut up in there? Sitting who shut up in my chair. Sister Lynn, you were there with me. Sitting in my chair while reading, trying to, to, to keep and take notes of all of these different, different chemicals that they were using that failed. After I read them and pronounced them, the power of the Holy Ghost shook me in my chair. Corona. 
trying to make sure there's not too many people in there. Yeah. Oh, that's a blessing. Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> if I was in jail, I think if any of y'all watching this in prison right now, start coughing. <laughs> All night. <laughs> Jesus said, bring, I'm going to preach to bring. bring him to me. You don't have this yet? Whatever the problem is, Jesus told me to tell the people, bring it to me, because that was a cure for that. Whatever it is. And Jesus says that all these other things fail, but bring it to me. He says that I am the way. He says, I am the way. John 14 and 6, I am the way. I'm the truth and the life. He said, I am the Lord, thy God, that healeth thee. All I'm trying to say this morning is that he is the cure for this. He said, I am the bread of the life. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he die, yet shall he live again. Because I am the cure. Hallelujah to God. So you might be asking this question, how, how, how do I obtain this cure? This is going to blow your mind. And he told me all you have to do to obtain this cure, uh -huh. this supernatural cure, Amen. is to repent. Amen. Oh, I got you right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the virus is still here. It's because you have not paid your copayment. Yeah. You have not repented. Amen. In Acts 2 and 3, then Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Aha, uh -huh. for the forgiveness of your sins, for your viral infection, for your Corona 19, for your time of pandemic, and you shall receive the antidote. I said you shall receive the antidote. I thought for sure that the more happy people in the church today see that God is speaking. I'm not talking about man, but I'm talking about God. Even though the scientists said there is no cure, God told me to tell my people there is a cure. Hallelujah, God. There is a cure for this. Thank you, Jesus. There is a supernatural antidote for this. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, there is a cure for this. Hallelujah to God. But the nation and the people that will get it gone, they will return into hell. But 2 Chronicles 7, 13 to 14, he said, if I shut up the heavens, that there be no rain. For I command the locusts to devour the land. If I send the pestilence, if I send the pandemic, if I send the grasshoppers, if I cause the world, the land to catch a fire, if I send hurricanes and tornadoes, if I send earthquakes, if the whales begin to beat themselves, if the birds fall out the sky, if my people, you don't want to kill, but if my people, you want to stay sick, but if my people, which are called by my name, which is humble themselves, just realize that you can't do this. Realize that without God, you can do 
in the barber shop. I think it was last week. I was sitting in the barber chair with my mask on. Hallelujah. And debonair. I said debonair. That's high class. Get my fade on. I wish you could just vote 
for certain situations. Roe was in Wade, etc., etc. That are equal to my Christian belief. Devil can't get my vote. I'm sorry. Oh God, here we go again. Here we go again. He's tricking the that this man is crazy. Turn on CNN. Since you don't believe me, turn on CNN. You, you don't live up here where I live in a high place. Turn on CNN and you hear what I'm saying all day. From professional people who were in the White House with him. His own niece. See how quiet you are? You don't pay attention. You don't have information. They're writing books. And you no, and I know this is the worst president that we've ever experienced in the history of this country. Amen. See how quiet you are? Amen. See, those kind of people, don't call me, don't pray for me, I don't need you. Amen. If you can't see how the enemy is using individuals to bring this nation to its knees, Every nation and people that forget it, God, shall be turned to the America has crossed the line. You see, see how you're doing it? America has crossed the line. You know it. We have forgotten God. Yes. Democrat and Republican. Yes. And independent. You know I'm telling the truth. Yes. But I get ostracized and kicked aside because I preach truth. Anything I've told you is in the word of God. It can be confirmed. I told you that any time any man, including me, exhausts himself as though he is God, God will punish him. Yes, he will. Donald Trump hasn't got away yet. There's still a God. And there is a cure for that. It's quiet in the church. Can't you see the, can't you see the condition of this world? Am I the only one that can see this? Got Bible to confirm it. These are the beginning of sorrows, men's heart. It ain't talking about the heart like I got with a student. It's talking about their minds. Men's minds are going to fail them for the things that's coming upon this earth. It's going to get so bad that if you're not rooted and grounded in Jesus, you're going to lose your old folks, say your natural bone mind. See, nobody, see, they don't want me to talk like this. He's always giving us doomsday. At least I'm not a liar. It's quiet. See how quiet it is? Pastor, I, wanted, I came to church to hear something happen. This, this, is, this should make you happy. You see what I'm talking about? In the midst of a pandemic that's obvious to everybody, over 200,000 plus people. Do you know they just said that they anticipate 400,000 people to be dead by the end, or by the end or middle part of the year, next year? See, I would say, okay. I think maybe I should do all of my tapings from home. Because I'm looking at people that's not responding to the truth. But I'll tell you what. Now, I'm, I'm, this is honest, real talk. You can check out the whatever. I am not going to spend the remainder of the few years I've got left lying to you. I decided I'm going to do me. I'm going to preach like I feel it. I'm going to teach what I think God told me to say. And don't care who like it. It's a terrible thing to go through the grave being somebody else. Somebody coming to the cast. So I don't, I don't know him. You know, somebody's got to tell you the truth. Yeah. Nothing I've told you is not in Scripture. We are not going to repent, and God is not going to relent. So you need to prepare yourself. What's coming next? You can anchor yourself. Come on, somebody. You can anchor yourself. I'm anchoring myself, missionary. 
I see y'all on Facebook. I see y'all what y'all what y'all call them parties. What is it called? Watch. I see y'all at your watch parties. Why don't y'all try to try to start watching some truth instead of watching entertainers? See how quiet it is. You, I don't care how noted your choir is, you ain't gonna sing your way out of this. There we go again. Don't care how, how noted your musicians are. I don't care if they can play like David. Amen. Jesus is the only cure for this. Amen. Clap your hands and shout. Turn around three times, take your ears and sit in no place like the Church of God in Christ. It's gonna take more than that. For God to give us the cure. And I'm done. The only cure for this, the releasing, amen, of this remedy for the ills of society, the injustices that we experience, and the COVID, COVID virus. The only real cure, mark my words, is going to be when Jesus who makes intercession for us turns to God and says, you know God there's a few of them down there there's one over there one over there, see he makes I'm going home. he makes intercession for us and when God gets ready to kill everybody Jesus says, look, don't kill all of them spare Pastor Thompson, please no, you remember, you didn't get there he can turn to God and say, God that's enough he can turn to God and say, have mercy on this nation. Are y'all hearing me? Jesus is the only cure. He's the mediator between man and God. And what we, I'm preaching to you, what I cannot get done through my prayer, Jesus sits on the right hand of God and makes intercession for us according to the will of God. And the will of God is for me not to perish. But I have everlasting life. You that are sitting here, stand with me. And you that are viewing now, I've given you the best that I have. I've given you the truth. I would be less than a preacher if I didn't give you the good news and the bad news. I wish I could tell you that this is over. I wish I could tell you, as the songwriter said, the storm is passing over. I wish I could tell you that. But the word of God does not say that. The word of God says it's going to get worse. Scientists say it's going to get worse. That's confirmation. Dr. Fushi said, prepare yourself for this. Jesus said, prepare yourself for this. Dr. Fushi gives hope, he says, but we've got to ride this thing out. We're going to lose some lives. Are y'all hearing me? Hundreds of thousands of people are going to die. He said, but there's going to be an end to this, but not now. And so does the word of God. There's going to be some casualties. There's going to be some casualties. Some of us are going to die. See, see how we did it? I'm glad a preacher would say that to me because then I can get my heart right. Because as Pastor Townsend, I'm not immune from COVID. I love the Lord. I've given my whole life to this church 40 years. That's half of my life. 45 years of my life. I've preached to you. I come down here almost every day and I said, God, this is the best I can do with what I had. I said, God, I wish I could have done more. And he told me, you've done enough. He said, if one soul out of all of those on the pictures on the wall and all of you that are here and you that are human and you that used to be here for 45 years, he said, if you just got one soul, then you've done enough. Are y'all listening to me? I'm doing this for him. And I've got to tell you the truth. I don't want anybody to leave this audience or stop viewing this service 
and you have not accepted the cure for sin, which is the cause of the problem. Romans 10, verses 8, 9, and 10 says this, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has praised his child him from the dead, thou shalt be cured. That's all it takes. You've tried everything else, and it's failed. I tried all of those medications, Sister Rhonda, that they gave me. I tried them. I followed the, the, the guidelines, but it didn't help. But thank God, I still have hope. Amen. I'm seeking Jesus now for the cure for my spiritual and natural enemy. Jesus said, if I, see, we have to be careful. You know, there's very little preaching of the gospel anymore. Listen, he went into the depths of hell to test the remedy. Said, death, where is your sting? Yes, yes. See, you didn't get it. Donald Trump said, where is your sting? You didn't get it. You saw it. You missed it. <laughs> Grave, where is your victory? Uh -huh. Isn't that the way your president came out? Yeah. Yes, he did. You can't see it because you're not spiritual. Yeah. I got the keys. I got the cure. I got the keys of death and hell. Come on, people of God. He said, in my hand. He said, don't you remember me saying, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'd have a cure for this. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men talk to me, unto me. Look at you. You are proof that he's the cure for this. You've been tested. You've been tried. Come on. You've been proven down through the years. Look at you. And you're still here. Come on. I need to with me. You're still here. <laughs> Nobody feeling this but me. Donald Trump said, look at me. I feel better than I ever felt before. Look at me. I'm more sane than I ever been before. Look at me. I'm more, I got more joy than I had before. Look at me. It works. Even in this dark time. Look at me. And when people ask you, how is it that you're functioning and coping? Let them know. Got a cure for this. I got a cure for your depression. Have I been depressed? Yes. Am I depressed now? No. You know why? I took the cure. Have I ever thought about giving up? Yes. Do I think about giving up now? No. You know why? I took the cure. It's time for the saints to break out of your little boxes. Watch this one. And release the cure that's in you. Release the fragrance that's in you. Quit sitting around and waiting for somebody to come out of your house and drop something. Don't you know, just like the coronavirus, amen, is spread by droplets in the air, so is a supernatural cure. You can't get nobody to come up with me yet. You can release what you have into somebody else's life and they can be made whole just like you have been made whole. Somebody go plant it. Somebody go water it. And then God will give the increase. I want you to stand right now with your mask on. And I want you to spread that supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. The supernatural powers cannot be masked. They put two men in prison that had it. The preaching field and the evangelist field was closed. The two evangelists was in prison, beaten up. But they had a cure to it. The Bible said at midnight, the darkest point in their life, they were praising and magnifying God. And the jail opened up. And they walked out of the jail. Yes, they did. Are y'all hearing me? 
There is a cure for this. Jesus is a cure for this. Just like when there was no cure for sin, the blood of golden ghost didn't work, all the antibodies that the priests used did not work, the lepers were dying, the lunatics were crazy, the Bible said, then, then, are y'all listening to me? Then, said he, a body you have prepared for me, are y'all hearing me? In the supernatural laboratories of heaven, God was putting together a cure. Oh, no, no, no. He said, I know how to cure this. I'm going down myself. I wish I had some believers in here. God became flesh. Jesus tempted with the virus. Tempted in all points like you and I. He had to test it first. The Bible said, yet, without sin. My brothers and sisters, there is a cure for whatever ails you. And Jesus is the cure. And the only thing you have to do is repent. I'm praying that everybody that's watching this broadcast that is a believer do what I've been doing. I have repented and I have turned. What's that? 180? 360? I've turned from one direction to another direction. Are y'all listening to me? Are y'all, I need, I just need a witness. We can be, we talk about turning back to holiness. The church you came from, old time holiness. I need some witnesses. I'll stay here all day. The cameras go off. The church of God in Christ, we need to come back. If you think that I'm just blowing smoke, when you get home, Google this. C-O-G-I-C. Live preaching. And see what shows up. Old men, women, and mothers, evangelists, who are dead and gone, preaching this same kind of gospel. And until we go back to preaching holiness, follow peace with all men, and the holiness without which no man can see the Lord. I know my time is up, but I don't have an audience but this one. They identify that. 
Let me tell you what God says. He don't identify with it. Let me try it again. I might as well lose all my friends. I'm trying to identify with him. The time Yes. Yeah. I just claim to say, I didn't claim this. I don't know how long I'm going to be around this. I'm done, brother. Oh. be like Jesus, go get you a mule. And ride in that mule throughout the city and deliver word. Ain't no anointing sitting in the back of your Cadillac. I don't know what y'all call that, Zoom or Boom or you or Toom, whatever y'all been doing. Yeah, I know the world is identified. Yeah, this is G. I'm on my way. Just go somewhere get on the altar. It's quiet in the church. See how y'all do me? Walk out on me. I do not care now. We need to identify with Christ and not society. And we got to put a difference. Because when we act like them, I'm talking about me, certain ways that I dress when I go hilltop or go skyway, I told you before, now you're tired of hearing it. They run up on me. I don't even know these people by name. They told me, said, Rev, you can't come at us like that. I said, you are cut above us. Go put your suit back on. That's what the street tells me. The street tells me to set a standard so they can, they can have something to reach for. They're never going to accept Christ as long as we're acting like they're acting. Amen. they got to have pure gospel. you got to have a pure remedy for sin. And that's only by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If I've offended you, I'm sorry. But God ain't. If I can say one word that causes you to receive eternal life at the risk of me losing my reputation, I'll do it. If Jesus can give his life, I can lose my reputation. I ain't trying to be nobody. I ain't trying to go nowhere but heaven. And Jesus Christ is the only remedy. Sick people will be healed when the church turns. Sick people will be healed when the church turns. God will stretch out his hand with signs, wonders, and miracles so that the people will know that God has sent us. The Lord bless you. And I pray that you receive the cure for this.
broadcast of Greater Glory Ministries. It's our prayer that you've been challenged and encouraged by the Word and empowered to make a godly difference in the world. We appreciate your continued financial support of our ministry through your tithes and offerings via Cash App, PayPal, and Giveify. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, we would love to hear from you by calling our intercessory prayer line at 888-723-6419, extension 7. We invite you to subscribe and to stay connected with us on our social media platforms via Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel at GGM Seattle. Be sure to join us for our Thursday night Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every Sunday for greater glory in the morning at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. On behalf of our pastor, Superintendent Sam Townsend Sr., yours truly, Mother Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, and the entire Greater Glory Ministries family, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your family. And as you continue through your week, remember to give the Lord the highest praise of hallelujah.